Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be making a simple joystick controller. So let's begin. Uh, before I start with the mesh, I'm going to go up to Edit, Preferences, and if you go under Key Map, you can set the spacebar action to either Play, Tools, or Search. So I'm going to leave mine set to Search. So if you push the spacebar, you can type up any command like Shade Smooth for the mesh. So with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start with the mesh. So for this cube, I'm either going to go up to Object and type in Joystick. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and get started on the mesh. So you can either tab into Edit Mode, or you can just go to Object, Edit Mode. Little mouse button to pan your view. Um, I'm going to change from perspective to orthographic, so hit numpad 5. There we go. One on your keyboard to go in the front view. SZ to scale. So if you hit S and then Shift Z, to lock it on the Z axis. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so now one on your numpad to go in the front view. Now we're going to go into wireframes or viewport shading wireframe. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate. Scale this down. S Z to scale on the Z axis. I'm going to scale out. SZ. Go. I'm going to hit 7 on my numpad to go in the front view. I'm going to go Shift A and in a circle. Now, don't touch this circle yet because every time when we add in a shape with vertices, it gives us this little custom menu to tell us basically give us the option of how many vertices we want before we commit. So if you just like select a vertice or you move it, the menu goes away. So now you're committed to how many vertices that was on that menu. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z. Shift A. Circle. And I'm going to put the vertices to 12. All right, that's good. L to select all the vertices. One on our numpad to go in the front view. P e to grab, Z to up. All right, now I'm going to turn off wireframe mode. All right. So now we're going to hit E to extrude, S to scale, G to grab. All right. And now I want to check if my faces are facing the right way for render. So hit L to select all the vertices. Go up to this menu right here. And then right under normals, click this little button for faces. Increase the size. All right, now as you can see, faces are all facing inwards and we don't want that. So now we're going to go up to mesh normals and flip normals you can also hit alt n for flip normals but now that our normals are facing the right way so that's good now we're going to move this guy down by g to skip g to grab and z to lock on x-axis big so i'm going to scale that down just a bit Right. Grab this loop by Alt Shift and then collect the select the row of vertices. E, e to extrude, G to grab. On, control Z. E to extrude. Grab 
Now, one to go into our front view. It's the scale. D to extrude. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the faces for now. I'm going to move this very quickly, so I'm going to turn on my toggle x-ray, select these row of vertices, and then we're going to move it down, x-ray, select these row of vertices by Alt-Shift, E to scale, E to scale again, E to extrude, G to grab, Z. All right. And then face. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this row of vertices right here. Shift D to duplicate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the faces. So X, only faces. Scale that one more time. All right, hit one on our numpad to go into front view. E to extrude, Z. E to grab, Z. That looks good. But we're gonna add the little handle. So Shift A. Sphere. I'm going on our X-ray vote, X-ray mode. There we go. And I'm going to mark this down to 12. All right. L to select all the vertices. G to grab. Z. Place that on the top right there. All right, now what we're gonna add, the last thing to add now are the buttons. So select this row of vertices, Alt-Shift, click on the vertice to select the loop, Shift-D, hit the X to lock on the X-axis. You grab X. All right, so now we're gonna put you extrude, Z, go. Select the row of vertices by Alt Shift and then click on the row of vertices. There we go. E extrude S. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that row of vertices again with the extruded faces. And then I'm going to hit Alt B. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Control B. Bevel. That's nice. All right, Alt Shift, select the row of vertices again. Uh, right. E to extrude, S. G to grab. And base. Right. And that's our button. So Z, and pad seven to go into top view. Hit L on our keyboard. Scale that up just a bit. Shift D to duplicate. Scale this down just a little bit. So hit both on your keyboard. That's the scale. Now, when you scale, it might be different from yours because you want to go into transform pivot. You can either set it to individual origins and then it'll scale it in differently. Or you can just put medium point, which will just scale it all together. You go individual origins. 
we go. Switch it back to medium point. All right now we're going to lower the buttons into the joystick. E Z. All right now I'm going to go ahead and lower the stick and the ball into the little rubber socket. Go. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the subdivision surface modifier. So tap out of edit mode. What we should do is we should smooth the object out first. So go to object, shade smooth, or you can just tap on your space bar and just add shade smooth if you want. Smooth. Now, before we add our subdivision surface modifier, you're going to see that the whole mesh is going to get collapsed down, simplified. Um, that's okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add mean creases to restore the shape and add more edge loops to it. So, click on subdivision surface, add the levels to two, tab in back into edit mode, and now we're going to select the cube and the rim of the cube. For the joystick and now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to mean crease let's add it all the way up all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to add an edge loop so control r to add an edge loop and then just slide it all the way up and down. Go. Right now, our joystick is ready to uh, ready for material. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit N on my keyboard to hide that. Tab out of edit mode. Now we're going to start adding our material. Now you'll notice that each material is principal BSDF, but uh, way back in earlier versions, it was just set to the regular diffuse shader. Um, I'm going to leave it to principal BSDF just to handle the specularity and the material and the roughness. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to viewport shading. Um, because if you leave it to this one, it'll, you won't be able to see anything. So you have to set it to the material shading. So I'm going to set this to And we want it to look like a plastic, so bump down the specularity just a bit. I'm going to leave the roughness 4.8. All right, that's good. All right, now let's add another one. Call this base. New. Rim. Select this little hour edge by selecting university and hitting L. I'm going to put a sign. Bump up the color to white. Specularity. 4.84 will do. All right, now we're going to handle the little rubber part. So. Select that new rubber. Wave sign. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the specularity and just increase. The roughness. Oh, that looks good. 
Right now we're going to use the stick. Now I'm going to go into my tab into edit mode. On the x ray or wireframe and x ray, and then I'm going to select the stick, hit L, sign. All right, now we're going to turn off the viewport or the x ray and wireframe. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the metallic value all the way up to 1. You can see it kind of looks like a metal, so that's good. And what we're going to do is we're going to bump down the specularity to 0 0.600. All right, and now the roughness we're going to add to 0 0.625. 0 0.625. Six two five. Okay, hold on. Zero point six two five. All right, that's good. Now the final part is the ball and buttons. Ball and buttons. All right. So select the ball and the buttons, sign for this. I'm going to go with the speculation. How about of edit mode? All right, now it's time to set up the, the backdrop, the camera, and the lighting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a plane, so Shift A, Mesh, Plane, scale that up, get one on our keypad to go on the front view, place it directly underneath joystick, S the scale. A bit. I'm in the edit mode. I'm going to grab these two vertices right here. Hit E to extrude, Z. That's good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap out of edit mode and I'm going to name this backdrop. We're going to add a modifier. We're going to add bevel. All right. Now for the bevel, we're just going to add seven segments. That should do it. All right. We're going to set the color to the backdrop. Backdrop. Um, now, we don't really need principal BSDF for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and set it to diffuse. Now, I'm going to get just a light blue color so it can complement the green. Yeah, that'll do. All right, now that our backdrop is ready, what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the camera and the lighting. So hit N on your keyboard to bring up your tools. We're gonna go to view. And then where it says lock camera to view, click on that button. Now hit zero on your, on your numpad to go into camera view. And wherever you adjust your perspective or and your middle mouse button, you'll also move camera just pan middle mouse button it's 
just gotta find a good angle. Stick. I'm going to edit this little rim right here, scale it in a bit. Yeah, that's much better. All right. Tab out of it. I'm going to adjust the backdrop. I'm going to keep that camera angle and I'm going to adjust the backdrop. GX. Oops. GX. There we go. All right, that's good. So now it's going to get back out of edit mode. I'm going to adjust the camera one more time, sorry. There we go. All right, that's good. We'll leave the camera there. Now we're going to delete the point lamp. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add Shift A, Light, Area Lights. We're going to add two, so bring that up a bit. GZ to locking on the Z axis, scale. If you hit R R twice on your keyboard, you can actually go into like this little orbital mode. Find the camera. Now I'm going to add another one, Shift D, X. Go into orbital. All right, so for the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to add. We're going to add the first light to 7,000, and then the second light to add to 2,000, or I'm sorry, 4,000. All right, now if you want to test out your renders, go to Z. We're going to go to viewport shading. Bit dark. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add that. Oh, um, I forgot to mention. Um, sometimes um, when you go into viewport um, render sample, viewport shading, uh, this like the display render material, it may look different because depending on the render engine. So. It, it looks like this if you're set into Eevee, but if you go into Cycles, you'll get like a bunch of fireflies. Um, so it, it depends on what type of uh, render setting you want. Um, Eve, Eevee is the new one, um, but people till this day still use Cycles, and Cycles uh, just creates really good rendered results. So either or. It depends on what you want just personally. Uh, I'm just going to set mine to Eevee for now. So we're going to 
in the lights closer. Oh. Target, so I'm just that. That looks good. Now it's time to set up our render. So you click on this little camera for a render. You can actually have a you can actually set the sampling. Now the render sampling um the higher the number is the better quality image you'll get but it'll actually take your it'll actually take longer for your computer to render and sometimes you're not really going to notice a difference between sampling of 200 versus a thousand the only difference is that your computer just took more time for it to render and of course the lower the number is like one then the more or quality you're gonna get with the render image. So I'm just gonna set this to 200. Um, if you're on a laptop, uh, I suggest going pushing this number down just so you don't have to make your laptop work extra hard. And now you just have to set where you want it. So we're gonna go to output properties and then and then if you click on this little folder right here, you can set to where you want this image on your laptop to go. Um, I'm just going to leave it as... Alright, so now I just have... I set it to desktop... to my desktop right here. Now... We're going to leave it to um, PNG now. Um, as you can see, you also have like other um, movie file, movie formats, JPEG, AVI RAW, and FFmpeg video if you're doing an animation, but it's always a good idea to just render out the frames as PNGs first and then switch it to like a video format just in case if something happens to your computer, you don't lose all that progress that you had. So again, we'll just leave it as PNG for now. Compression, I'll just leave at 15%, that'll do. And then once you're ready to go, you can either go to render, render image, or you can just, or as the hotkey, you can just push F12. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit F12. And all right, uh, that's the end of our tutorial. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like uh, sub and subscribe for more lessons. And thank you again for watching. Bye.